Hey guys, Victoria Paxton here. Thanks for stopping back by my YouTube channel. How's it going guys? Okay, today we're going to have a channel update, just a few things, and we're going to talk about Jessica Renee Johnson. Okay guys, so I'm going to do a little like update on life stuff at the end. So make sure you look out for that. All right, you know how we do here, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Normally I have a Friday night live, 7.30 p.m. here on my YouTube channel, Eastern Standard Time. This week we won't be having one, it's Mr. V's birthday. So we are going for a long weekend and celebrating. We're going out of town. So. All right, so you know how I do, I read the background, then we talk about my connection and my reading. So here we go, guys, ready? August 30th of this last year, Jessica Renee Johnson would have turned 43 years old. So maybe it's August 30th. It's August 30th of this year, she'll turn 43. Don't listen to me, you guys, I'm sorry. Okay, it was hard finding a lot of like her background information, so I just did the best I could. Jessica's body was found in Horn Lake, Mississippi on June 2nd, 2017, tied to a mailbox, you guys, tied to a mailbox with her shoestrings, okay? She had no shoes on when she was found. The shoes were found in the house connected to the mailbox, but she was tied to a mailbox and it was a house that her and her boyfriend, Garland, used to stay at, okay? So they had friends there. The body was discovered by a United States Postal Service employee. The woman was distraught, so she called another Postal Service staff member to come and help. That staff member took pictures, pictures of the body, and they called the police. Okay. <sighs> Jessica was the mother of a teenage son and a young daughter. Okay, Jessica had a few demons of her own. She was fighting with methamphetamine methamphetamines and Xanax okay but y'all know how I feel about this I don't care how many drugs you use I don't care how many drugs you use you don't deserve to be killed period right <sighs> I look at it like my son's a recovering drug addict and good people do some rough things sometimes you know <laughs> scared the crap out of me Okay, so Jessica was, was dating a guy named Garland, Garland Hart. Both Garland and the house that Jessica was found outside of were both known to be like bad news. People did drugs in there, a lot of stuff went down. Jessica was last seen around 6 p.m. the night before her body was found tied to the mailbox. Okay, so I was able to connect with Jessica. She came through. She immediately, I explained who I was, of course. She immediately started talking about her daughter and son and that you know she's just checking in on them and she feels horrible that she's gone and and I said okay you know I want to ask you a few questions about the end she was apprehensive just like most people are most people that are killed traumatically don't want to discuss it they don't want to relive it but she said she would answer my questions so I said first off people are saying that you took your and immediately she was very adamant. I did not do that. I wouldn't have done that. Did I say I was going to do it several times when I would get angry or upset? Of course. Who hasn't? Which I can understand that. I said that a couple times when I was a teenager. Um, so she said, I would never have done that to my children. She's like, I would have never, ever wanted my kids to go through this. She went on to say that her and Garland and two of their friends were doing drugs. Garland was kind of, um, I believe the word she used was amp, was it? Yeah, she said he, he was acting different and he was acting amped up is what she said. She said, he was like picking at her he was getting angry with her and he said he was leaving to go score okay so he left 
when he came back, she said he was a hundred times more angry. He was so angry, so pissed off. They did some more and they were back and forth fighting. He pushed her, she pushed him back, he smacked her. And finally, one of the guys stepped in and said, take this outside, I don't want this crap in here. Get out of here, take this outside, okay? Now, you have to keep in mind that supposedly the, the, the owner of the home actually considered himself a friend to Jessica and Garland, okay? And in an interview, I guess he said, you know, how much he, he cared about her. But he also changed his story several times, so there you go. Anyway, okay. So he began, they went outside, they took it outside, and Garland began accusing her, throwing out accusations. And he said, she said he did this a lot when he was high. Um, he became paranoid and he would accuse her of things. He was throwing out accusations about you, you screwed this person, you screwed this person, excuse me. She said, of course, I was denying it because it never happened. Um, she said, but he was getting more angry and more angry, angrier and angrier. So they're outside in the front yard. And I asked her, okay, because this comes into play. I said, at that point, I interrupted and I said, did you have your shoes on when you were outside? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. I was like, okay. She said, why, why would you ask that? And I said, because your shoes were found inside the house. The laces were taken out and you were, the laces were tied to your neck area, to the mailbox. And she said, yeah, I definitely had my shoes. So she said he was accusing her. She said he started shaking her and then everything went black. And she said, I don't know how much time went by, but a short time later, I was here. Okay, so she doesn't, she doesn't remember anything else, okay? So based on what she was saying, it sounds to me like he did something, I don't know if he strangled her or what, then he, but here's the thing, here's the thing. Many people have come forward when I was researching Many people, you know, detectives and, you know, retired detectives and stuff have come forward and said that there's no way that she could have sat down, positioned her body the way it was, and tied two shoestrings together perfectly, and then tied it around her neck to the post. She was on her knees, okay, to the post and was able to herself, right? Uh, plus the pole. The mailbox pull, mailbox pull, like shakes like crazy. It's it's not down in there, like it's not cemented in there properly, so it moves and wobbles. So there's no way. I mean, you know, and we know we know that Jessica didn't take her life. Okay, so I hope that she's able to receive some sort of justice, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. And I feel horrible for her mother. When I was researching, I, you guys, no mother should have to bury their child like that. Like, yeah. Okay guys, I know it was a bit short. I have a few channel updates. Um, I've been trying to get the Timothy Johnson video done. However, all the footage that we took when we went to Tyson's, you guys, it was raining, it was cold, you can't, you can hardly hear me, there was tons of traffic, I didn't have my external mic on, I totally blew it and forgot it, so I'm either going to have to redo, go down there, redo the whole footage, or um, I'm going to have to do like a voiceover or something. I don't know. I really wanted to do it a specific way. I mean, I believe that Timothy Johnson deserves, his family deserves justice. He was shot and killed because he shoplifted a pair of sunglasses. Okay. Um, that just hurts my heart. It does. Um, so there will not be a Friday Night Live this weekend. It is Mr. V's birthday on the 14th. 
And so we're taking a long weekend. We're going to the casino, the horse races. Um, yeah, so we're gonna take a little break. So I apologize, I miss you guys. I really do, I miss you guys. Um, the other thing, the older defendant, Olvin, for the Jose Guerrero case, um, we met with the Commonwealth attorney two days ago. Yesterday, we were in court all day, sat there all day, waiting for the hearing. And they said, oh, you have to sit out in the hallway because there were so many of us. So we were waiting in the hallway and a lady from the Commonwealth attorney's office kept coming and giving us updates. After sitting there the entire day, she said, uh, we need to move you all to the conference room because the hearing's done. And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> It. So I guess it happened so quickly they didn't even bother to come get us because basically the judge called the case and the attorney said, "Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna sign." So what that means now is that Olvin said there's enough. He basically was saying there's enough evidence against me that we don't need to go forward with the preliminary hearing, which is good because you know we were gonna have to put. The detectives on the stand to talk about what they found and put Jose's girlfriend Sheila on the stand and she was gonna have to talk about when he went missing that night um, so it was good they didn't have to testify um, it was just kind of like we were really caught off guard you know um, I was interviewed by two media sources they asked me all these amazing questions and then they only put like two little answers on the TV <laughs> I was like wow the one place didn't even publish it, uh, WUSA 9 did. That's on my community page if you want to see it, but it's not even worth watching, I don't think. I mean, it was two seconds. Like, you know, even the, the journalist, it was like so short and quick, you know. Anyway, so May 2nd, we go back to court. So his case is going to the grand jury. We go in May 2nd, and we get the court date for upstairs. Okay, so it goes up to general, I believe it's general district court. So, you guys, they, there's a lot of things I can't talk about, but it's just frustrating. It's so frustrating that you can go out and murder someone over $70 and the one defendant's walking free right now and the other one's probably not going to get that much time. It, it just blows, it blows my mind, you guys, like... So, yeah. So, pray for a good outcome. May 2nd, we'll be up there for court. Um, I was able to meet and sit and talk for a really long time with Jose's best friend. Um, he's an amazing young man. Had a great conversation with him. I was able to meet so many of Jose's cousins and family friends and and I actually got to sit down with Jose's girlfriend, Sheila, and had a really great conversation with her. I was very honest with her. I said, you know, I really believe there was more to what you were saying, more to the story. You know, I, I didn't want to, like, lie to the girl, you know, but I had a really great conversation with her. And I think, I think she's a good kid, you know, and I think hopefully, you know, she's going to be okay. You know, her and the baby. The baby, you guys. Oh. She is, she's a little mini clone of Jose. She's absolutely adorable. Like, <laughs> she's just adorable. Um, but yeah, so, I, it, it was a long day, but it was really nice to hang out and be able to, like, chit-chat one-on-one with his family. You know, it, it was really nice, so. Yeah, so that's about it. No Friday Night Live this week. I'm going to miss my ladies and gentlemen, primarily ladies. I'm going to miss you guys. You know, we have so much fun on Friday nights. Like, I'm going to miss you ladies again, two weeks in a row. I'm so sorry. I'll make up for it next Friday, okay? So I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's healthy. Be nice, be kind, stay safe. Stay healthy, you know? Yeah. That about does it for me. Bye, guys.